Hi everyone, in this video we will describe an extreme optimization approach to show the effects of some parameters on our trading system. This is by far the best optimization we have achieved here. So as you can see, we have around 3000% in return and we have a constantly increasing equity. The details of the trades are also shown on this graph. We're going to explain these in this video. We have all the trades on the price charts as well and we're going to go through these in this video so stay tuned please be careful the way i squeeze 30,000 percent returns out of this strategy is not the safest way to use it and i definitely do not recommend these parameters for real trading however the strategy itself is a very good one in my opinion and it has great potential if you are new here the strategy relies on the reiner theo bollinger band strategy for trending markets we have tried it in a first video with excellent results and I would say very little risk. I will not go through the details again, but you can follow the first backtest video from the link in the description. And the Python code is also available for that video as well if needed. Here we will try to apply extreme parameters to get relatively large returns. First, because it's fun to do it. I mean, it's fun like to test stuff and play around with the Python code. And second, because we can learn a lot in the process and maybe we can reach a setup that would lead to realistic high returns. So let's jump into the code and see how it all goes. So this is our Jupyter Notebook file. The first cell is just for loading the data. I'm using the Y Finance and I'm still getting a lot of comments like how do we load the data? So the easiest way to load daily data from historical uh, databases is just to use the Y Finance module and you can load your data into a data frame just using a single line. Here, for example, I'm loading this stock, the Russell 1000 index between 2011 and 2021. So these are 10 years of data loaded just using one single line of function. Anyway, we are cleaning the data. I'm cleaning all the days where we didn't have any price movements, probably weekends, bank holidays and so on, resetting the index and printing the head of our data frame just to check that we have the correct data format and we are working properly with this data frame. Then I'm using the pandas underscore technical analysis module to compute the technical indicators such as the moving average. I'm using two moving averages here and I'm adding these as two new features into our data frame. So I'm using the 200 exponential moving average and the 150 uh, moving average as well. So if the fast moving average, the EMA2, is above the slower one, which is the EMA, in this case, we are in an uptrend and in the opposite direction, we are in a downtrend. This is the first modification I've added into the algorithm. Then I'm using the uh, length 12 RSI as well, using the same pandas underscore TA package. So this is added using this line here and it's added into our data frame. So we have the RSI values for each day. For the Bollinger Bands, I've modified the length, which was 20 in the last two videos, as used by Ranier Tio himself. And the standard deviation, I've used 2.0 here instead of 2.5. And the reason I've added these modifications to the Bollinger Bands with these two parameters is to make the system less selective in the sense that we will get more frequent signals and we'll get a higher number of trades at the end of our uh, backtest. Because for those who have been watching the first video, you've noticed that it's an excellent system, but it's so selective that we have too little trading signals. And so it's on average two per year and we're trying to increase this frequency here in this uh, optimization. Then instead of using the uh, add EMA signal or the exponential moving average signal as we have explained it in the previous two videos, I'm using the two EMA signal like I have now two uh, moving averages. So one is fast, one is considered slow. And as we have mentioned before that when the fast one is above or below, the uh, slow moving average, we decide whether we have an uptrend or a downtrend. So this is done here and it's added as a new signal, which we are calling EMA signal into our data frame. This function here is basically the same as in the two previous videos. So in brief, we are testing if we are closing below the lower band of the Bollinger's and at the same time, if we have an EMA signal that is in an uptrend, like equal to two, in which case we have a buying signal that we are positioning exactly at the closing price of the current candle. As you can see, we have this parameter here, which is called percent. And this is where you want to put your um, buying or selling order. But for this video, we are using zero because the target is to increase uh, the uh, frequency of um, 
of the trades and this is provided only if we can make the system less selective so we're going to keep this zero at the moment and at the same time if we have a downtrend so meaning the ema signal is equal to one and we have a closing price above the uh, higher bollinger band line in which case we have a selling signal which is exactly at the closing price of the current candle we can verify the current state of our data frame checking wherever we have an order signal that is different than zero meaning where we have buying and selling signals which are shown here in the last column this is the order signal so we have the closing price where exactly the signal and for which price the signal is issued and we can proceed and visualize those signals on our data chart and these purple points are the signals that we can see so i'm going to zoom in somewhere just to see more clearly let's take these here so we have the two moving averages we have the fast one above the slow moving average and at the same time we have a closing candle below the lower bollinger band so we have a buying signal here this purple point one is a buying signal here and here as well these are two buying signals they are not all perfect signals but we can see that the entry points are uh, impressive using the bollinger bands combined with the moving averages in order to proceed with a back test we need an exit strategy or how to close uh, the open trades so first of all we're going to check a trade was opened for more than 10 days we're going to close it anyway we don't want to fall into those long-term trades for more than 10 days i even find 10 days too much but for the sake of this back test we're going to leave it 10 and we're going to exit the trade we have a long trade and the rsi is going above 75 or if we have a short trade and the rsi is going below 25. now in case the rsi is not enough for the uh, exit to close the trades we are going to use a stop loss as well which is going to be the minimum value between the current low of the current candle or the low of the previous candle times one minus a certain percentage so we're going to go below the lowest point between the last two candles within a certain percentage that is uh, indicated here by the user this variable percentage for example i'm taking two percent for the sake of this particular test and we're going to use a two to one take profit stop loss ratio for the moment this is in case we have an uptrend and we are buying in the opposite direction when we have a downtrend and we are putting a stop loss obviously it's going to be the maximum between the highest point of the current candle and the highest price of the previous candle and we're going to add a certain percentage to our stop loss price so it's going to be multiplied by one plus percentage which is two percent here and the take profit is twice the distance of the stop loss so this is it basically we added a moving average to just to use two moving averages to detect the trend it's an uptrend or a downtrend and when we are having long and short positions we are going to modify the way we are exiting by adding a stop loss as well on top of the rsi condition just in case the rsi condition is not enough and we also decrease the values of the uh, bollinger bands length 14 instead of 20 and standard deviation 2.0 instead of 2.5 now the tricky part is that i've used the margin 1 over 15 and this is kind of risky but it was just a fun test and this is how we achieved 31 thousand percent or 32 thousand percent almost uh, in return so as you can see we started with one thousand dollars in cash and within 10 years we could achieve an equity peak of 320 thousand now, obviously, this is not realistic because we didn't add any commissions, any um, fees on top of our trading. However, it was simply fun to tune the parameters in a way that we are getting like almost 60% of win rate and so on and so on. So if I want to get more realistic, first of all, I would decrease the margin. I wouldn't take more than one over five to decrease the risk. And I'm going to show you the results first so we are still around 2700 percent which is not bad as a return in 10 years it makes around 277 percent per year in return and when we look at the equity we can see that we have an increasing curve that is going most of the time up during the 10 years except few drawdowns periods which is normal for any algorithm or for any trader at the same time we can see that the slope is not that impressive at first but it reached increasing strides at the end of the 10 years period we can take a look at the um, 
uh, the chart of the prices and we can see that it got very choppy here and this is where we started losing big amounts of money we can check here those big triangles they are showing losing trades but they are large relatively in size but also we have large green triangles showing big wins at the end of this period of 10 years so we can dive deeper in this and check why the algorithm uh, is behaving in this way at the end because this is very nice to see at the end but it's also risky because this is where you can lose a lot of money as well. This can be explained by the fact that we are trading with most of our equity, 99% of our uh, money, and we are taking one to five margin or one to five leverage, which means that when you are increasing your equity because you've been winning so far, and at the same time you are using a margin, one over five, it means you are trading with a large amount of money and this is why your jumps are going to be increasing with time as long as you are winning of course so if you get into losses the losses and wins are going to be smaller this is why you have very small points at first it can be losing trades or winning trades it doesn't matter so these points are relatively small they increase with time because your capital is increasing and this is where this type of strategies or money management, meaning using 99% of your equity into trading becomes uh, dangerous. But at the same time, if you have a safe strategy, it's also very rewarding. And the most interesting part actually is the number of trades for these. It's 82. We're achieving 82 trades in 10 years it's on average eight trades per year remember that in the first video we've got a very nice result shown with an increasing equity but the problem was the number of trades so we've got only 23 trades in 10 years which is two trades per year and the purpose of our optimization videos was to increase our returns but also to increase the number of trades because we would like to get a more significant and statistical confirmation that this system is worth it and for those who like the gambling style since we are not playing with real money here we can increase our equity margin to 1 over 15 we can run this again and we can see the plot we have yes we have 30,000 at the end 30,000 percent but look what happens when you have a drawdown period and you are using a large margin so this is where you can see the risk very clear numerically uh, proven in front of you on this graph like we've used it We've used a margin of one over five. We haven't seen such a large drawdown and that's only because we have increased the margin. Now, if we go to one over 20, I think we can total out the, uh, yes. So we have minus 100% in return and our algorithm wouldn't survive the drawdown period. I'm going to plot this and we can see that the drawdown period will be wiping out our account. Okay, so this is it for this video. I hope you guys liked it. I'm going to invest more time on this particular strategy because I'm still convinced that we can still bring some improvements in terms of stability and safety of the uh, trading system just to make things clearer and avoid those small drawdowns now for those who are curious you might want to take different stocks and try the system on different stocks it might work tune some of the parameters slightly not the bollinger bands probably the um, moving averages or or so it's going to work as long as you have a clear trend so it's going to do things automatically for you the problem with all algorithms it's hard to cope with choppy markets so as long as you are using a trendy market it you're going to see very nice results if you guys like this video please leave a comment leave a like subscribe if you have the time for this and until our next one trade safe and see you next time